historical and our community is historical in mm. this nation is historical internationally but yet we continuously shame our sisters and brothers for doing these behaviors but what that that doesn't to me personally i feel like there's a lot of healing involved with that but they, it doesn't set us apart from our cis counterparts so how do you guys feel about the shaming community when it comes towards trans work that people in the community confide in for survival skills versus the cis community who's been doing it, but yet the judgment is is totally different. And the, and not critiquing exactly. historical critiquing. transphobia yeah, exactly. that disallows economic exactly. viability. Exactly. So, um, I believe that each individual has the ability to stand up, think, and most of the time for themselves. And if you choose to do sex work, then that is your choice. Um, not for me to knock it. It's not for me to judge anyone. However, it's, it's sad and disheartening that for the trans woman, sex work is survival. Okay? And now, I, I think I look at it on a, on a whole basis as I don't differentiate between it. You know? Whether you're a cisgender or you're trans or you're a male, I honestly feel that sex work is a devaluing of the body and a devaluing of a temple that has been given to you by God and the universe. For me, when I was in sex work and someone, I had to negotiate with someone for my body, it, it was, it took me to that level of, you don't have that power over me. I'm not gonna give you that power over me. So I don't find, I look at it uh, straight across the board. It's not a, a trans thing, it's not, uh, for me, it's not a cisgender thing. It's a thing of valuing your body. It's a thing of, and I wouldn't even say morals and values, because who says that someone that's in sex work doesn't have morals and values? I just think it's a personal thing, and we as a community, we need to respect each other's choices. Um, if I may, I would say that um, I'm not judgmental when it comes to sex work. I have this conversation with my sister Royale, my brother Mo, all the time, and I say that if sex work is something that you want to do, that's fine. It's it's okay because that is your life that you have to live. But my question that I pose to them all the time is, what happens when you get 40 and 50? What happens when you're you're older and stuff starts to sag because that's what happens? What happens when you're no longer interesting to men? What happens? What do you have to fall back on? And so. I said I had this conversation with Mo all the time, and I say the reason why I stopped sex working because I was getting older, and my question was, well, what am I going to do, and what am I going to fall back on, and financially, what will I have to support myself once sex working is no longer good? So it, it, it's good for the eye catching when it's when it's good at the time when the money is coming in the thousands and the and the five thousand and the overnights and flying you here and there. It's good then, but what happens when you get? to 40 and 50 and it's no longer good. What do you have to fall back on? And what, what do you have? What can, can you walk into your home at 50 and be like, you know what, I was at school, but look what I have. And look what I can fall back on. What, look, look at the roof that's over my head. And so I, I never judge anyone and never put anyone down for doing it. But my question is, can you use it to be a, to, for a come up? And you should be using it for a come up. Use it as a time where, of course, you're still looking for jobs, but you're doing it on the side to make sure your bills are paid, to make sure there's food in your house, to make sure your rent is paid. But when that job does come in, you know that, okay, I don't need this anymore because this job is stable enough to keep me for as long as I need to be kept. So.